27 hours. Holy smokes. And the CR-10 just did a wonderful job. Check that out. I wish I would have been using the new Prusa slicer. I would have been a little smoother on the top here. This was sliced with a uh, Cura 2.4, so very, very five-year-old. Still working. Yeah, I'm happy with that. On to the next one. We should have 100 grams to spare on the next print, which is also going to be over two days. Wee! This is the actual Disky, the Apollo guidance computer interface that we're printing here. And these here are enunciators that we're going to backlight with LEDs. Behind that panel exists this tub, and within it, I'm thinking I'm gonna make a PCB that's just gonna sit right in here and shine through the front grate. This is the front grate, and each one will get an LED, and I think a PCB will just sit perfectly in behind there. Maybe we can even surface mount the LEDs, I'm not sure. But we'll have this done by PCB way. Right now, we can get the TG-130 upgraded to TG150 for no extra money. I'll do the entire project in KiCad like we have on previous ones on the channel here, and then we'll have PCBWay make the uh, boards for me. Uh, right out of Shenzhen, we'll do probably five boards to start, and maybe we can give some away, or I'm not sure how we're going to do that, but that'll be pretty cool. Okay, I reprinted the key caps that you saw in the previous video. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try pour some hot glue into them, fill in these inserts and hold the centers of some of the numbers. I've caught the print just finished. I set it to 60C on the bed and I'm gonna try just dripping some hot glue into them and then let it set up. I don't know, it might work. Yeah. I will just turn off the heated bed and let that cure. These came out much better than the first round. Pretty happy. Took a couple of rounds to get it right, and the only one that has trouble is that eight. But all the rest, totally usable. Still might laser cut something later. This bottom pan is done, and I had a bit of a problem. Partway through, that is what happened to my extruder pan. So either I couldn't clear it, whatever was in there, and it happened right about here. You can see in the layers where I was dinking with it and actually caused a little tiny bit of a layer change, but uh, there we go. I had to fix, there's some tape, some painter's tape embedded way down in there. But that is our bottom tub for the disky. Is almost all the filament from that roll almost takes a full kg. Found a fan in the pile that's the right size and I figured it out. Um, one blade is actually cracked and broken right there. That's why it was kissing the case. I'm glad it got through that print. It, was, it did make it weak and it cracked the print already when I tried to take the sport material out. I'm gonna fix this up. Soldering iron, we'll just solder this in, hook it up, away we go. And we're back together. I know there's a noisy fan in the power supply, but no more noisy fan from here. I think we're in good shape. Print cooling fan was fine, seems to be fine, so I'll order another spare of that to have it in the heap, and we'll be good to go. This one, too bad. This is original Creality, so this might have been original from when I got the printer. That's a lot of years. I should really change the one that's in the power supply, though. That sounds like heck. All set, no more fan noise, and we are gonna try our first Benchy on this that uh, is sliced with the new Prusa slicer. I made my best guess at modifications to the profile for this to work. I also went ahead and ordered a spare hot end to have. Probably still have a spare, but whatever. Always have spares, and we'll see how this comes out. This printer, I don't know whether I'm gonna have issues with the G-code wipe and stuff with my clips, and gotta give it a try, but I'm really happy with how the slicer worked on that printer. Um, Prusa slicer, man, thumbs up. Really like it. Alrighty, so that is pretty darn good. Check out the sides of that. Wow. So this came out 
so decent that I'm actually going to retune the i3 profiles a bit more because if the CR10 can do this good, I better make the i3 do a little bit better. That's down to 89% on the extrusion multiplier, so taking away 11% filament, it was really over extruding. Six iterations and we're down to this, so good to go. That is ready on Prusa Slicer to go forward. Ah. Tune that some more and uh, all my profiles will be in my GitHub. Well, finally made some progress on the CNC machine. Uh, I did try and live stream it and it went poorly. The equipment failed again. Pretty happy with this. We're getting there. Uh, we're ready to almost put the plate on and we might have a CNC machine soon. Who knows? Maybe in another month or three. Okay, we got the stream rig fixed and during the stream we were able to uh, assemble a good portion of the CNC. Check this out. I am super excited about this. The day is looking up. We got everything's coming up Melhouse. So I might stream again later on Make Me TV. If you're not subscribed, links down below and uh, we'll have some more fun. Today was a good day on the CNC. Ha, not a running joke anymore. It looks like a CNC machine. We streamed it live. I got the settings finally figured out and working on the live stream. Cameras are all working. I'm gonna stream again tomorrow and hang out with you guys. This is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying this now. This is, uh, that's good to be back at making. I'm feeling a lot better about this stuff. Cool. Fourth time through and I'm finally beating this ESP32 breakout video. I think I'm done with it this time. All the voiceovers are done. I just have to sort out the montage and we're good to go. Finally finished the video on this ESP32 breakout and it's uploaded for patrons now for early viewing. This is how I do the thumbnails on the white backdrop and bring it into Photoshop. This is where we got to yesterday on the live stream on makeme.tv on my secondary channel. I am super happy with where we're at. This CNC is pretty much done. I'm going to stream again later today and we'll do the final steps because I got cut off due to a network failure, which I've now fixed, I think, on the streaming PC and we are good to go. Uh, we'll do the offline controller and see if it moves. Not my favorite place. Hopefully this goes all right. Back from the hospital, quick little mailbag for patrons, and we're gonna go back to streaming and finish up the CNC machine, but that mailbag should be up on Patreon, hopefully next week. Printing some knobs now for this. These'll go on the X and the Y axis so I can rotate them manually. And I think that's the end of the pieces I need. I printed a bit holder that'll allow me to stand up the bits here in the channel. Actually, I printed two and we'll mount those in and get this out to the garage. Nice. Happy with that. Beautiful. Those will just go right on. Yeah. And yeah, very cool. Should do the trick. Check this out. Got myself one of these ordered from eBay using our funds from the kits this month so that we can do a better job making more kits. Uh, finally gonna have a little bench meter. It's nothing fancy, but it is uh, definitely better than what I've had before. I love my flute, but this will be handy. Found something pretty cool when I was cleaning up in the workshop here. Check these out. Anybody remember Forrest Mims books? So it was funny. I was actually thinking about doing a simple transistor project along to show off a microcontroller. And I thought, what a better way to do it than to actually use one of the originals. Pretty cool. Ronald, this order is for you. Hope you enjoy. People buying kits are one of the ways that we're getting new inventory and new parts for projects on the channel and keeping the shelves stocked. Pretty cool. <laughs>